Hey folks, I don't want to oversell this recipe, I don't. Hey, I do too. This is the best refried bean recipe you're ever going to find in your life. Good old southwestern traditional Spanish refried bean recipe where? Right here. Stick around. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the backyard. My name's Kent Rollins and welcome to some cowboy cooking. And what's the cowboy cooking today? Refried bean. Woo wee! One of my favorite dishes when I go to one of them places to eat out. A lot of times I'm disappointed because I'm thinking, did they just dump these out of a can? Let's go a traditional route and make this like I saw an old Spanish cook make out near Silver City, New Mexico back in the 80s. I've been guiding elk hunters out there about 19 and 82 and 3 and 4. We got through after about a six week stint up there in the mountains. Come in, what did we do first? No, we didn't take a shower, uh-uh. We went straight to find some place that was cooking so I didn't have to. Down some old alley we drove and there was an old tin barn. And I said, what are we doing here? He said, best Mexican food you'll ever eat in your life. He said, make sure you get the refried beans. And I did, folks, and they was the best beans I ever eaten in my life. So I got to watching this old man and what he put in them and how he went about doing it. First thing he always told me, start with good beans. Now, I've always been a fan of casserole. My mother got me hooked on them long many years ago. People have always asked me when they see this bean video that we've done before, and Shannon will have you a little old link right up there where you can go back and see it. You didn't even pick or clean or nothing. You didn't get the rocks out of them beans. Folks, I got tired of looking. I ain't found a rock in them beans in years, so hey, I think they pre-cleaned, pre-sifted. I just dump them in there and go to work. So we're going to start with a pound of beans, all right? Now to start with, I have eight cups of water in here. That's what I'm going to start with. We're about that much above them beans with the water level. Now this depends on what size pot you put your bean in. But don't think this is all the water that these little fellers are going to get. That's what we're going to start with. And I hear you out there asking, you going to soak them beans? Let me think about it. Huh. The only place I'm going to ever soak a bean in my life is when I'm above about 4,000 foot elevation. That's what makes the biggest difference. Now I've been at 10.5 and I have cooked beans all day long that I didn't soak and I didn't think this was ever going to get done. Now when I was cooking on the Gulf Coast with a good friend of mine, Tony Osborne, live at Ruston, Louisiana, he would soak them beans in an ice chest, but he would put ice water in there and keep them so cold, soak them overnight. He said it made them more tender, easier to cook. Now a lot of folks when they soak beans, they may soak them in the house in a controlled environment. But if you're soaking beans and you're somewhere out in the camping in the wilderness or something, beans can sour pretty quick. So make sure that water stays cold when you soak them beans. Let's get these on the burner and we'll start the process. You gotta have some good hog meat of any kind. Now when I'm doing a refried bean, I like to have four strips of thick cut bacon, cut about an inch, and just go ahead and dump them right in there right on the first. We're gonna use two different kinds of peppers. One of it's gonna give it a little heat, the other's gonna give it that good smoky flavor that you gotta have if you're doing refried beans. One of them is a cayenne, and the other one is a dried ancho chili. Come out of this little sack right here. It did, Shan will show you. You seen me peel that there onion and leave this here on it. You might have seen this done before, but this is called the automatic dicing slicing device because the root will hold your product in place as we go about this. Now, if I was really dicing them onions small, I'd start up here, but these is beans and we don't want them to boil away, so we're gonna make a pretty good chunk out of them we are. And you can see how easy that just come off there. Don't chop your finger up in there with it. It don't mix well. So. Let's go ahead and stick him over there. Now these little dried peppers here, folks are gonna tell you different ways you can do this. You can soak them in water to where they get soft, then put them in there. Me, I like to let them get soft in the mixture that they're gonna live in, so I'm just gonna chop them here. So chop that end off. If you want more heat, leave the seeds in there. If you don't, take them out. These things are gonna give you such a great smoky flavor to these refried beans. We have two spectators left that want to join in the hot bathtub over. But if you don't like a cayenne or a jalapeno or maybe a serrano, hey, try you some green chilies, whatever you want, but make it a chili of your choosing. Somebody asked me one time, you got any knife skills? Just got one. Don't cut yourself. 
we're going to give them a good stirring. You have to make sure, now we're at a high heat and we're going to come to a good rolling boil and we're going to leave it that way for about 10 minutes. We're going to have to check this periodically to add some water to it. When you go to add water to beans, don't be putting some cold water in here. You're going to shock it. Keep you a pitcher of hot water on the stove, on the fire. That way them beans ain't going back into shock and having to start all over again. That's what makes mushy, mushy beans. Now, you know, we started out with about that much above them beans. Now, sure, there's a little more than that after it gets to going, it looks like there's more. But as them beans cook and expand and get a little thicker, you're still going to try to stay about that much above the level. Make sure when you're stirring, you go plumb to the bottom. Make sure everybody gets off there. There ain't nobody lazy down there just laying there and stir often. All we got to do now is have one more thing for 10 more minutes, and that is the helmet. Ooh la la, as my Justin Wilson friend would say, I guarantee that's gonna be good. I can just get the whiffs. The water level has begun to decrease. We got us some hot right here, so we're gonna add a little in there to it. We've been on about 10 minutes on a good hard rolling bowl. So what we're gonna do, one and a half tablespoons of our mesquite seasoning, and it too has a little ancho on there. One teaspoon of garlic powder. Two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Water level is good. We'll turn the fire down just a little to where we can keep us just a low boil or a simmer. We're gonna probably try to cook these about two to two and a half hours, depending on your country too, wherever you're at on up and down scale and altitude but we gotta cook them till they soften just a little. I don't want them plum soft like I would cook a regular pinto bean. I just want them to soften just a little that we can make refried beans out of them. According to the waterberry and the sunshine and the angle of the spatula, it's been two and a half hours. I'm gonna pull one of these little fellers up here and see. Oh, he is refried bean ready equipped. If Shannon zoom in here, I want you to see all that good color and flavor. So. Let's just pour this in there slowly but gently, trying to get all that juice out of there. Make sure, folks, that you drain well. Now, I'm gonna tell you something here that might be shocking to some of you. Don't throw that bean juice away. Ha! Uh -uh. You can keep that stuff refrigerated, mix it in with something else, pour that over a piece of buttered bread. So. We are drained and ready to go, so let's set that aside. Now we got to come to the refrying parts, and we're going to use as a 12 inch cast iron skillet, which you got to have if you're going to make refried beans. And we're going to put this back on a low heat. Two tablespoons of butter. Butter is simmering right along. We're going to add the drained beans back to it. We take the mashing apparatus and we go to mashing. Now, a lot of people, when they make refried beans, they gonna put them in some kind of blender or something, blend them down. You ain't making refried beans, you're making a bean smoothie. So we gonna mash them. That's the way that old man told me out there in Silver City in the mountains. Look at you go. I got her on high, sugar. Uh-oh, look alive, the bosses just came in. Uh-oh. It's quality control that showed up. You can see we're half mashed up pretty good. At this point, I like to go ahead and add me a half a cup of sour cream. And I like to try to get that a little everywhere we can. And a half a cup of mayonnaise. Give it a little stir to try to get everybody incorporated. And then we'll go back to mashing some more. Big, you might get bean splatter. You know it? spoon of cumin and sprinkle it around there because you don't want to come out today. Teaspoon of smoked paprika. Go back to your mashing and mixing. Whoo, that flavor that's coming out of there folks, that aroma. Mm. Well folks, we're gonna let this sit there and simmer till it bubbles up a little and it'll do that. Maybe four to six minutes, that's the most. Pull it off there, give it one more little mixing, and then we're gonna put it on a plate and eat it, so bear with me.
1982 it is again. Done took me back to that little old shack where that old Spanish man was cooking them refried beans. <clears throat> this is not out of the can, folks. This is real traditional refried bean. Now the texture is not that old creamy bean looking soup you get at them restaurants. You can still taste the bean in here. The peppers that give it that good smoky flavor plus a little bit of that cumin that's in there that helps bring it over to the Spanish side. But the cheese and the green onion, mm. But I think them old dried ancho chilies is what does the trick. Let's go back through this deal real quick, you know, to start out with a good bean. That's what I got to tell you most of all. I do love the casserole bean. Now, don't drown them so much and put that much water on top of them. Keep it about an inch and a half on there. Cook them till they're not falling apart, but just started to get just a little tender. Put them in that cast iron skillet. Don't forget that butter and mash them. But don't try to mash them to where they just look like soup. Leave them a little bit intact, but still sort of creamy. That mayonnaise and that sour cream is going to blend it all well together. Whew, this will be one of them dishes that you will want to make over and over again, folks. We really appreciate you dropping by the backyard this morning. It's done got hot here in July. Try this recipe out. Shan will have everything right there in the little description below the recipe she always does. She takes care of us one and all. God bless you each and every one, and olay, my friend. <coughs> Wa la 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 la. Refried bean take 19. This one will be good, I promise. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the backyard. That onion like to throw me a loop, it did. What do we do? No, sorry. Refried beano. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by. Name, my name is Kent. Ma -dee, ma -dee, ma -dee. Yo. You don't have to clap every time. Uh huh, that's seven. That's what we're on, seventh take. Yes, ma'am. Okie dokie. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by. <laughs> what? <Sorry. laughs> hey! <laughs> Here we go. I ain't even gonna clap. Just start okay, off. here we go. No, ah, don't say just... nothing. Don't say, don't, say, don't say a word. Here we go. <laughs> Need to drink a whiskey. <laughs>